All of us want to get the most for our money, but there is much to learn, as Sandra could tell you. I guess it really started one afternoon after school. The new skirt I bought last month was just back from being cleaned. Oh, what happened to it shouldn't happen to a dish rag. Uh, must be poor material. Have to return it. Let's see. I got it at that super value store downtown. I bought this one at the same time. I got two for less than Mom usually pays for one for me. But it looks as if threads are pulling on this one already. Maybe I ought to take both skirts back to the store and complain. Well, Mom and I agreed it's my responsibility now to buy my own clothes and a regular allowance. I need skirts, and I can't wear these. Well, on Saturday, I got my next clothing allowance, and I set out to do some shopping and return the two skirts. At the bus stop, I ran into Jane Russ. You know, she seems to have lots of clothes. Always looks well-dressed for any occasion. Is that you, Sandy, dear? Mm-hmm. Well, what's the matter? I'm never going to buy anything at that store again. They wouldn't make good on these skirts. And, Mom, I'm never going to buy anything cheap again, either. Oh? Mom, how do you like my new shoes? They're the most expensive I could find. This month's allowance just pays for one shoe, so I'll have to owe next month's allowance for the other one. They're very nice, but... Uh... Oh. I walked all the way home in them. Mom? Are expensive shoes supposed to hurt your feet? The high price doesn't necessarily make them good. They were so pretty I couldn't resist them. And I needed shoes. And it looks to me as though you still need shoes for school. Mother, I think I should have more money. More money for my clothing allowance. I saw Jane Russ today. She's always so nicely dressed. I wish I had as much to spend on clothes as she does. Why, I bet she spends twice as much as I do. We often assume that other persons and other families have more and better things than we do because they have more money to spend. And we're often wrong. Jane's clothing allowance is the same as Sandy's. Whatever we have to spend, we can get more for it. We can raise our standard of living if we plan the spending of our money and buy wisely. Golly, I buy something cheap, and it's not a bargain. I buy the most expensive, and I still can't get my money's worth there either. How do people do it, get their money's worth? Well, you might ask Uncle John how he does it. You know, he's a purchasing agent. He pays to buy wisely. I'm beginning to think it'd pay anyone to buy wisely. I think I'll go and see Uncle John. And that was my second shopping trip. And Uncle John, the shoes were so expensive, I had to promise my next month's allowance for the other shoe. So when I start buying again, I want to know how to get more for my money. Well, Sandy, I'm asked about that sort of thing every week from some of our department supervisors here. And I say the way to get more for your money is to plan your spending in relation to your budget. When is the money available? And when do you need this thing? You know, to help me put across my points around here, I had some of these little cards made up. And when is the first of the four better buying questions? When do you buy? Where do you buy? How do you buy? And what kind do you buy? Golly, can I ever remember all that? Oh, sure you can. Take that first question, when? As I said, you should buy when you really need it and when your budget will provide the money. 
You might also think about seasonal price changes. You see, prices fluctuate according to seasonal supply and demand. Men's clothes are usually cheaper in the summer, especially winter clothes. Prices of fresh fruits and vegetables vary according to the growing season. You see, fresh fruits and vegetables are highest in the spring, the same time of year that canned goods are at their lowest. But Uncle John, how do special sales affect those charts? Sometimes bargains seem irresistible. Well, when a store clears odd lots or lowers its prices for some reason, you may find a bargain. Something you need at a good price. So I can be a better buyer if I consider when do I buy? Let's see. Seasonal variations and special sales. After you consider your needs in relation to your budget. Oh, yes, the budget. All right. Where do you buy? Where do you buy means choosing your source of supply so you get the most for your money. Look over here a moment. This fan display has helped me explain what I mean. Store A sells this fan for $16.95. Store B sells the same fan for $14.85. Well, that's the chip. Well, not necessarily. Store B is cash and carry, that's all. In Store A, many services are available. The privilege of charge accounts and credit. The privilege of phone and mail order. And free delivery. And the ability to choose from many makes and models. And a policy of exchange without question. Yes. Well, when they're available, you may use these services or you may not. That's your privilege. But the store usually charges the same price to those who do use them and to those who don't. That's right. And so the prices are often higher at store A to cover the cost of those extra services. Of course, there are exceptions, many of them. But the point is to know what you're getting for your money to help you choose where you buy. Well, what do you know? It's already time to go home. But what about how to buy? Well, Come on, we'll stop at the grocery store on our way home, then we'll talk some more about how you buy. At the store, our discussion started with a cake. We were talking about the size of a unit to buy. For example, this one pound cake costs 50 cents, and this three pound cake sells for only one dollar. The larger unit is the better buy, unless part of it becomes stale before we get around to eating it. So you buy to suit your quantity needs, remembering that it usually costs less to make things in larger units. This principle applies to most products. Buy the largest unit you need, which you can conveniently use. And buy as many as you can at one time. Things are usually cheaper by the dozen, if you have all that money. Relate your needs to your budget and buy as many of the largest units as you can pay for, store, and use. That's how to buy. As for the fourth question, what kind do you buy? I explain that it's mostly a matter of getting product information from various sources. There are usually a great many products to choose from, and it makes sense that the wise buyer can find better values in some than in others. Some people buy by trademark. It usually represents a standard of quality which, over a period of time, you come to know. If your experience has been good with that brand, you buy it again. Some people get a lot of information by reading the product labels when they're specific. Reading the labels of different grades and brands can help you choose. The least expensive that suits your needs. That's what kind to buy. So that was Sandy's first real lesson in how to be a better buyer. A couple of months later, I had paid for that other shoe of that expensive pair. And Jane and I were helping each other remember those principles of wise buying. And I knew Uncle John would be proud of me. I was paying attention to when. My budget allowed those shoes I needed for school. And to what kind, I knew the brand and the shoes were well made. 
And to where? The store had the services I need. And I paid attention to how. And I knew I was improving in my wise buying because this time I had bought two shoes for less than I had paid before for just one. Well, I think Sandy's discovered there's another way than just more money. And that is to make better use of the money you have. 